time they want to take a territory is principalities they send friends. Who are principalities? The word principality is the word al -K. It means an entity that has authority to exercise dominion through negotiation. So when a principality comes to this territory, he won't come into the land and start trying to enforce dominion. There's no legality. So what he will do first is to find out the people that have legality and jurisdiction. So he will go to you using the window of your gift. He will enter in negotiation. So those of you who are prophetic, for example, you can pick signals in the spirit. And so the principality knows that you respond to frequencies. So what he will do is that he will check to find out your lust. If he discovers your lust, he will now come into negotiation. Is that not what he was doing with Jesus on the mountain? If you are the son of God, turn these stones to bread. He was looking for appetite that he will exploit. But unfortunately, the one he met, all the appetites are dead. You see the problem we have? Why we will keep fighting? There are some of us who are prophets who still love women and love fornication. So when they show up, they will look for those ones and they will negotiate with them. And those ones will open the gates for the territory and so they will enter the land. They will go to some who are apostolic in nature, who have authority and they will go through the loss of power. If you want to be the strongest man, just add pride to what you are doing. Add exaggeration to what you are doing. Add lies to what you are doing. You can come to a herbalist and you see that people who have jurisdiction over territories enter negotiation. The moment they secure their allegiance, those people become a bandwidth and a radar through which the princes can enter the land. And the moment they are done, then the powers come. The word powers, there is the word exousia. And what those ones do is that they are the ones who create addiction. So you are a prophet. You fell. You ask God to forgive you. After three months, the guy showed up and said, this thing is a cycle. You fall again. You ask God to forgive you. After two years, it becomes your lifestyle. So what you do is that you create a system that manages fornication around you. So when you are preaching, you may stand here and be shouting, I decree you will prosper. They are using your frequency to enter the land. Everybody you are speaking over, they can enter the people because their hearts are open to you. And so as you declare, they use you as a channel to enter the people. And after a while, you discover these same people go to government. These same people go to their academia. These same people go to economy. And they carry the same energy of seduction. So when the guy goes to his job, he sees a negotiation of two million. They say, add one zero to make it 20 million. He can't reject it because he has come under the same government. To know is your enemy if you don't know your enemy you may take him for granted so it's important for you to understand him that's why paul said we should not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy if we are we will be in trouble second corinthians 2 verse 11 it said lest satan shall get an advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices. That means if you don't know your enemy, he will have an advantage. And this is why many Christians who should be champions are struggling because they didn't take time to understand who the enemy is. And so the first thing I will do tonight is to show you the authority structure of Satan. And then I will show you the weapons of Satan. And then I will show you his battle strategy before I show you your own weapon and advantage. Because if you don't know who he is, even if you are using your weapon, you may misfire. Glory to God. In dealing in the demonic realm, there are two categories of entities that war against the Christian. There are demons and there are princes. Demons are servants in the demonic realm or in the realms of Satan. Princes are not servants. They are fallen angels. And so they are, even the Bible acknowledges them as dignitaries. If you study the book of Job, you are going to see that they are called dignitaries. I'm not trying to exalt Satan. I'm just telling you facts of scripture. So that you are well positioned to fight your battle. Glory to God. When you deal with demons, they don't have legality and jurisdiction. Because, number one, demons are disembodied entities. And because they don't have bodies, 
they cannot function in any environment unless they take on another body. So the weakness of demons is that they need a body of an entity for them to function. This is why demons have to possess men in order to transmit their errand. And so when you show up, especially if a Christian is involved, they, what, the first thing you do is to address the legality. We are bought with a price. The body you are trying to afflict belongs to Jesus. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians 6, 17, 19 and 20, it says, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. And he said, we were bought with a price. So our body is no longer our own. Our body belongs to the Lord. So every time Satan tries to do anything around anybody, it's not a negotiation. He's an illegal occupant. So you show up in the name of Jesus, you kick him out. You need to watch this if you struggle with growth. Hey there, welcome to Grow with Mustafa, where we're all about helping you thrive in every aspect of life. Join me every day as I share powerful insights, practical tips, and proven strategies to help you grow and become the best version of yourself. Don't wait, hit that subscribe button now, and let's start this incredible journey of spiritual, financial, mental, and personal growth together. Let's grow with Mustafa. Let's continue the video and dive deeper into these transformative topics. Glory to God. We thank the Lord our God, the Father of all spirit, the God of all flesh. And we celebrate every father in the house, those in the auditorium, those watching online, and of course all the fathers in the body of Christ, especially the fathers of faith, we thank them, we honor them for their labors. We are here because they accepted the call. It's our prayer that every father will fulfill purpose in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Tonight, I want to share with us on a sensitive topic. I titled it, Fundamentals of Spiritual Warfare. <laughs> Can you give me a little volume? Uh, my, my voice is exhausted. In Psalm 144 verse 1, the psalmist made a statement that thrilled my heart so much. He said, the Lord teaches my hands to fight and my fingers to war. <laughs> the Lord Blessed be the Lord, my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. You see, we were redeemed kings and priests unto God. Every one of us has been brought into the family of God and by an act of God's sovereignty and benevolence, he didn't just ordain us servants. Of course, in serving his purpose and will, we sustain the disposition of servants. But in manifestation and essence, we were ordained kings and priests. And when you study your Bible, we will discover the cardinals of priesthood and kingship borders on dominion. When you are dealing with the subject of priesthood, first, it's an act of ministering to the Lord, extolling Him in His majesty. And then, the second aspect of priesthood is litigation and legislation. So priests are actually legal entities in the spirit. And their job is to write laws and to enforce written laws so that by all means the will of God will find expression and then kings are entities in the kingdom of God that are saddled with the authority to exercise dominion that's why I said where the word of the king is there is power who can say unto him what doest thou if we are going to function as priests as kings then we cannot 
by any means take for granted the place of warfare. Mahora Vakatoria Pakaristas Lelo Branda Sovra Kateli da Bahara Diga Sadak Verodila Hazevrondo Sabra Kadila Ragabados Kabarakate Zegzevira Zagabarado Dava Hallelujah I am truncated <laughs> Can we celebrate God's servant, Reverend Sam Abba? He's an elder in the land. It's an honor to have you, sir. This is a pleasant surprise. Glory to God. And so in order to function in dominion, we must put on the garment of warriors. He said, the Lord teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Jesus himself speaking in the book of Matthew, he says, upon this revelation, the revelation of Christ, he says, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So redemption does not excuse you from warfare. Redemption actually fortifies you for warfare. And so for those of us who are redeemed, we are not necessarily fighting to win. I told you last Sunday that come what may, we will win. However, we must know that we are fighting from victory because the one who actually war was Christ having spoiled principalities and powers. He made a public show of them, triumphing over them by the cross. The devil is a defeated foe. But you see, it's in the nature of Satan to rebel. So he will not relax and say, oh, I've been defeated. He wants to find out if you know. And so the reason for a service like this is to make sure every one of us know so that when he comes you will tell him I'm aware and you will keep your victory and maintain your stand in dominion and in all that God has made available to you in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8 the Bible said be sober be vigilant it said for your adversity the devil. He said he prowls like a roaring lion seeking whom he might devour. Yes, you are a king. Yes, you are a priest. Yes, you have dominion. But the devil is knocking and checking to find out who knows. And so if he comes and you do not know, you will become a victim. So the Bible admonishes you ahead of time. He said, be sober. Be vigilant. In fact, Paul reiterating the same emphasis he said, we are not ignorant of the devices of the devil. We know he's working over time to bring us into captivity. But a generation of warriors will rise that will tell the devil, remain on the floor. You have been defeated. We will not give you any chance to exercise tyranny. Ephesians 4.27, he said, giving no place to the devil. You will not give him half a chance. Because you will live to fulfill everything God has apportioned for you in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, one thing you need to understand about warfare is that you don't choose the battle. It's the battle that chooses you. If it's a battle that one chooses, some of us would have avoided it. But it's unfortunate that the Bible calls him your enemy. I don't know when we met. I don't know when I had a misunderstanding with him, but he has taken the position of being your sworn enemy. He said, your adversary, the devil. He has put himself as your enemy and he has brought a battle to your doorstep. And as a noble, you must fight. Nobles, we don't back out. We stand to defend our territory. You don't back out. He came with a fight. You will give him a fight of his life. Ephesians 6, 12, the Bible said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. When did you get into the ring? The war chose you. And so your duty is to prepare to fight and to secure and defend your victory. 2 Corinthians 3, 10 verse 3. He said, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war. That means the moment you put on this flesh, you became an enemy of Satan. 
And when you give your heart to Christ, you became a sworn enemy. This is why you must understand the fortification required for you to walk in victory. Listen, those making impact are not making impact by luck. They are making impact by dominion. The devil fought them and keeps fighting, yet they keep winning. Every time we testify, that same spot could have been the pot, pot of our defeat. The reason is a testimony is because we stood our ground, we enforced our victory, and the devil went back. And so everybody testifying is a champion. He conquered. That's why he testified. That same spot, others fell. Because the Bible says if you faint in the day of trouble, it's not because your God is not strong. He it said it's because your strength is little. This is why he said be vigilant, be sober, build capacity. There is a war at your doorstep. And if you will fulfill purpose, you must first of all conquer. The beautiful thing is that we are more than built and prepared to conquer. Everything is to our advantage. And that's why we are not fidgeting when the devil comes. We tell him, throw your best shot. You will be disappointed. Because we are walking from victory. We are not walking to victory. Somebody give the Lord a big hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. Now, for you to step into this arena of battle, there are a few things you must understand in addition to the introduction that I have given you. I'm trying to keep it a bit calm so that we can read verses of Scripture. You need to have these verses and apply them. Glory to God. The first thing you need to know is your enemy. If you don't know your enemy... You may take him for granted. So it's important for you to understand him. That's why Paul said, we should not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. If we are, we will be in trouble. Second Corinthians 2 verse 11, it said, Lest Satan shall get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. That means if you don't know your enemy, he will have an advantage. And this is why, Many Christians who should be champions are struggling because they didn't take time to understand who the enemy is. And so the first thing I will do tonight is to show you the authority structure of Satan. And then I will show you the weapons of Satan. And then I will show you his battle strategy before I show you your own weapon and advantage. Because if you don't know who he is, even if you are using your weapon, you may misfire. Glory to God. In dealing in the demonic realm, there are two categories of entities that war against the Christian. There are demons and there are princes. Demons are servants in the demonic realm or in the realms of Satan. Princes are not servants. They are fallen angels. And so they are, even the Bible acknowledges them as dignitaries. If you study the book of Job, you are going to see that they are called dignitaries. I'm not trying to exalt Satan. I'm just telling you facts of scripture. So that you are well positioned to fight your battle. Glory to God. When you deal with demons, they don't have legality and jurisdiction. Because number one, Demons are disembodied entities. And because they don't have bodies, they cannot function in any environment unless they take on another body. So the weakness of demons is that they need a body of an entity for them to function. This is why demons have to possess men in order to transmit their errand. And so when you show up, especially if a christian is involved the what the first thing you do is to address the legality we are bought with a price the body you are trying to afflict belongs to jesus the bible said in first corinthians 6 17 19 and 20 it said he that is joined to the lord is one spirit with him and he said we were bought with a price so our body is no longer our own our body belongs to the lord so every time Satan tries to do anything around anybody, it's not a negotiation. He's an illegal occupant. 
So you show up in the name of Jesus, you kick him out. And he has no choice but to obey. Because he doesn't have legality to function where he's trying to occupy. Now, when you are dealing with a prince, a prince has a body. So a prince does not possess men. A prince exercises dominion over territory so that he will enslave men. So when you confront a prince, you are not casting him out. There is nowhere to cast him to. Jesus himself was fasting. After 40 days and 40 nights, Satan showed up. You will think that's when he's most anointed. And Satan began to engage him. Why didn't the anointing affect him? Because the man had his own body that he was wearing. So when you are dealing with princes, you need to understand that they have certain levels of legality. And the legality princes work with are the negotiations they have with men. So their job is to possess territories. And I have taught you before, if you study Ephesians chapter 6, let's take it from verse 10. This is Paul speaking, you know, this man understands grace. He understands the authority of a believer. But he's showing you dynamics of warfare that if you don't understand, you'll be a victim. He said, finally, after he has taught them everything about new creation, he said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I wish I had time to deal with power. Because the kind of power he was talking here is advanced dimension of power. At this level, he has moved from dunamis. At this level, he's talking Iskus and Kratos. Those are men who understand operations in the spirit realm. He said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Next verse. He said, put on. <laughs> you are about to enter a warrior's warrior zone. He said, put on the whole armor of God that you may able to stand against the wise of the devil. These are not demons. These are princes. Next verse. He said, for we wrestle. We don't cast out. We cast out demons. When we meet princes, we wrestle. He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers. Are you seeing that they are calling some of these guys rulers? Rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. We wrestle. Hope you know, if they cast out princes, <laughs> would have stood on the altar here and say, the prince of corruption, leave Nigeria. <laughs> they, they don't possess people, so there's nothing to cast out. They exercise dominion over territories. We would have showed up and said, the demon of prostitution, leave. The demon would have gone, but it's not a demon. This is a prince. He negotiates with men. And using their will, he finds authority into a territory. So if you want to prevail in that territory, you must be ready to war. Because there is a dark cloud over that territory that you must rise above if you will exercise dominion. Now, when you study these wars in detail, a principality is a prince that comes first. It's derived from the word principle. And so these princes, they are like the first rank among the realms of fallen angels. So every time they want to take a territory, is principalities the same thing? Who are principalities? The word principality is the word al -K. It means an entity that has authority to exercise dominion through negotiation. So when a principality comes to this territory, he won't come into the land and start trying to enforce dominion. There's no legality. So what he will do first is to find out the people that have legality and jurisdiction. So he will go to you using the window of your gift. He will enter in negotiation. So those of you who are prophetic, for example, you can pick signals in the spirit. And so the principality knows that you respond to frequencies. So what he will do is that he will check to find out your lust. If he discovers your lust, he will now come into negotiation. Is that not what he was doing with Jesus on the mountain? If you are the son of God, turn these stones to bread. He was looking for appetite that he will exploit. But unfortunately, the one he met, all the appetites are dead. You see the problem we have? Why we will keep fighting? There are some of us who are prophets who still love women and love fornication. So when they show up, they will look for those ones and they will negotiate with them. And those ones will open the gates for the territory and so they will enter the land. They will go to some who are apostolic in nature, who have authority and they will go through the loss of power. If you want to be the strongest man, 
Just add pride to what you are doing. Add exaggeration to what you are doing. Add lies to what you are doing. You can come to a herbalist and you see that people who have jurisdiction over territories enter negotiation. The moment they secure their allegiance, those people become a bandwidth and a radar through which the princes can enter the land. And the moment they are done, then the powers come. The word powers, there's the word exousia. And what those ones do is that they are the ones who create addiction. So you are a prophet. You fail. You ask God to forgive you. After three months, the guy showed up and said, this thing is a cycle. You fall again. You ask God to forgive you. After two years, it becomes your lifestyle. So what you do is that you create a system that manages fornication around you. So when you are preaching, you may stand here and be shouting, I decree you will prosper. They are using your frequency to enter the land. Everybody you are speaking over, they can enter the people because their hearts are open to you. And so as you declare, they use you as a channel to enter the people. And after a while, you discover these same people go to government. These same people go to their academia. These same people go to economy. And they carry the same energy of seduction. So when the guy goes to his job, he sees a negotiation of 2 million. They say, add one zero to make it 20 million. He can't reject it because he has come under the same government. So he will compromise. And before you know what is happening, they web themselves into system. And those powers will create those addictions for you to remain there. A young lady wants to make her hair. She goes stand on the road. Somebody picks her up, gives her 50,000. She says it's just for her. Some even say it's for school fees. After she pays her school fees, she doesn't know why the next Friday or Saturday, she still goes back there. An addiction has come. A power has come. So when a principality finishes, he steps aside and the power shows up. And the power begins to function. When the power functions, after a while, the next guy shows up. The ruler of the darkness. The word ruler is the word magistrate. These ones are law makers. They write law. So you can come to certain territories, you discover that women never marry. The moment they are 22, they must give birth to a child outside wedlock. It's a law. If you enter that territory, for you to overcome that thing, your priesthood must be higher than the cloud of darkness. So your own warfare is to refuse that that manipulation will dominate you. You come to certain territories, you find out that people just, just go mad. And when you check, every young man from the age of 19 is high on codeine, is high on cocaine. And they think they are loving it. No, a law has been written. A law. Somebody told me some, some years ago, he was fasting and praying all night. He now relocated. See, before you relocate, ask God though. You may lose your authority and rank in the spirit just by relocation. He had no built capacity. He now relocated to a territory. And when he came there, there was the energy of seduction everywhere. He tried to pray. Prayer became difficult. Ah, is it not me that just pray five minutes have ascended? What's going on? Okay, so maybe he was tired. And the next day he rested to pray. When he wanted to pray, he didn't know that the energy level in that territory was different. The gradient had changed. He couldn't pray. After two weeks, he discovered that lust had entered his soul. In one more time, he too was looking for a girlfriend. What turned an intercessor to a harlot? It was a territorial influence. He came into a territory where he didn't have stature to pierce through the cloud. He came into a place where his set of all trances could not disarm the prison. You know, you can be living where intercessors are and they have opened the atmosphere. So you show up, you are praying 10 minutes, you'll see a vision. you say, yes, we are seers. You can even start a ministry and say, you know, uh, the Lord has sent us to a generation. It's that when your pride now moves you to a territory where those gatekeepers are not around. I'm not putting fear in your heart. I'm showing you the dynamics of dominion. Why do you think when you come to church, all of you are high? But when you leave church and go home, you become tired. 
Because this atmosphere, we have cooked it. We censored it before you came. That's why you are seeing vision. You are praying, you are crying. When was the last time you cried in the market? When was the last time you cried in your bedroom? Unless you devise the technology to monitor and cook the atmosphere, you can't find that level of ascension. And the unfortunate thing is that the bank does not have this atmosphere. The market does not have this atmosphere. The school does not have this atmosphere. This is why warriors must emerge. It said, out of Zion, saviors shall arrive. So that when you go to the bank, like somewhere, you will come with a radar. It said, Nayot in Rama, there was a radar there. The moment Saul entered, Saul began to prophesy naked. Until warriors are born, that men who don't just carry mantle, but carry atmospheres, begin to emerge. We can't take the, the world. We can't take the war. Warriors! Warriors! I'm telling you, see, when we begin to grow in warfare, people will no longer have mantles. Mantles deal with situation. There are men who will carry radars. When someone moves, he doesn't come with a mantle. He comes with a radar. So any city that somewhere enters, the whole atmosphere is open. Anybody can prophesy. Even if you are not a prophet, when Saul was prophesying, they looked at him and said, Is Saul also part of the prophet? No, he's not part of the prophet. He came under a radar. That's not a mantle. That's a warrior. Nayot in Rama, the camp of the prophets. The school where prophets are born because a man created a system there. That was the same thing Ananias built in Damascus. When Saul was fighting in Jerusalem, the moment he entered Damascus, Jesus appeared to him. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Ah, who are you, Lord? I've been doing this business for long. I've never seen anything, anybody talk from heaven. Who are you? You have come into a radar. A watchman has secured an atmosphere. And God told him, go into the city. You will be told what to do. And God went to the one who had the key and told Ananias, go and meet that man. I want to use him for something. Ananias said, no. This is the man that have perfected the church. Why should I do it? God said, don't worry. I have an assignment for him. And Ananias showed up. And say, brother Saul, the Jesus that appeared to you on the way have sent me. That means I may not be where you have the encounter, but I know about the encounter because the territory belongs to me. father sit down for a minute i'm laying foundation please hear me there is a contention over atmospheres because destinies can be trapped in atmospheres and destinies can be liberated under atmospheres but men who have the rankings to alter the laws that rulers right must rise and then you have spiritual wickedness in heavenly places you know their work their work is when you have served satan's agenda they will kill you those are the ones that uses the weapons of darkness they give you afflictions they give you sicknesses and they make sure you die frustrated they are called wickedness in heavenly places that's the cycle of demonic operations over territories this one is not for every believer. It's for sons in the kingdom. That's why you see 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, 50,000 people come under an atmosphere in church. They are worshiping and praising God. But you meet them in the market on Monday, they are different people. 
because they came under a web they came under a civilization regulated by spirits ancient spirits like the spirit of egypt that keeps men in bondage spirit of babylon that bring corruption to men they are syrian spirits that causes men to war until they are exhausted and drained and then they disarm them this is why beyond prophesying over people in church we must teach them the secrets of the kingdom so that they emerge as warriors because they go to places where we can't follow them and what they will carry there is the rank that they have built in the spirit thank you father manda brahas kavradigas zobra kido baragas da freketinas zaga baros lakoria baruskes you know when we share these things right it looks as if oh satan is powerful no these things don't reveal the power of satan these things reveal the excellency of the finished works of christ so that you realize that although this kind of robust system exists in darkness yet we walk in victory as if satan does not exist you know it's the size of your opponent that tells you what you carry when you disarm a giant then you discover what you carry is not small imagine when david confronted goliath the bible took time to give you the pedigree of goliath he was a warrior from his youth men carried his sword men carried his shield he was six feet tall 12 toes 12 fingers and you are thinking who is this mammoth man undefeatable a whole army fled when he screamed but a man showed up and said who is this uncircumcised philistine that defiled the armies of god today i will kill you i will cut off your head the beds of the air will eat you up and you are wondering excuse me sir that man you are at his knee level be careful he said no need for caution when goliath cost him the bible said david charged at him he carried something that is bigger than goliath and with a stone he slung it and brought goliath down so when you see the size of goliath you will now have respect for the covenant so the reason the ranking of goliath was rejected is not to exhort him is to exhort the covenant so when you win by the covenant then you know that the covenant is indeed great that's why i say have respect unto the covenant for the dark places of the earth are filled with the habitations of cruelty so if you have the covenant darkness becomes a ground of manifestation that's why we are doing what we are doing thank you father and we pray in the spirit for one minute can we pray in the holy ghost for one minute Some of you will rise as Davids, giant killers, men that carry the seven horns of the anointing, warriors, kings, poets, prophets. You will carry horns of the anointing, grown horns, and you will defy Goliath in different spheres of human influence. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Can you lift your hands? I want to proceed. But the oil won't let me. 
Ushers, the first three people that go down, bring them here. There's a weight coming upon them. Mantles, ancient mantles. Ancient mantles, ancient mantles. Prophetic mantles, apostolic mantles. Mantles of warriors, keepers, custodians, rulers over dominions. Wherever they are standing now, I release that oil. I release that grace. I release that grace. Step into that dimension. Yeah. We release, we release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation. Yahweh is 